So let's check out Amazon Linux. What's up guys, it's Josh back with another video. And today I'm super excited because I wanted to show you guys Amazon Linux and how to install it on prem. And most people, when you think about Amazon Linux, it's basically set up in the cloud. And so I wanted to show you guys how to set it up locally. And this is mainly for development and testing purposes. And also this is a cool way of spinning up your own virtual machine without having to pay for it on Amazon because most of you guys probably know if you've used these cloud platforms, even just spinning up a virtual machine, they charge you a couple cents or so to actually spin it up and get it up and running. And depending on how long you have it up and what it's being used on it, they charge you, you know, monthly. But this is a way to try out Amazon Linux locally on a system you have, maybe your laptop that you have running VirtualBox. I'll show you guys how to get it installed and that way you guys can play around with it. And if you guys didn't know, Amazon Linux, it's based on Rail. So it's basically Amazon's version of Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And to make things easier, I'll provide the direct links down in the video description to the official page to download the Amazon Linux operating system, you know, for various hypervisor platforms. And so first off, let's go down and hop over to the link that I'll have down in the description so you guys can download it right fast. All right, so this is on the Amazon site. I dug for the actual image. Uh, one day I just got curious. I was like, man, how do I install Amazon Linux, you know, locally if I wanted to? And I finally found it through the documentation uh, where you can download it. So like I said, I'll have this link down in the description of the video, but this is on their documentation website, basically run Amazon Linux 2 as a virtual machine on premise and use Amazon Linux 2 virtual machine images for on premise development and testing. It says we offer a different Amazon Linux 2 VM image for each of the supported virtualization platforms. And one of, one of the ones I was looking for was Proxmox because you guys know I have a Proxmox server. And so I wanted to get it set up there, but they don't have an image for that. It only supports VMware, Hyper-V, and I believe the other one is KVM as well as you know VirtualBox so you can install it on there but let me show you guys how to get it right fast all you have to do is don't worry about this prepare the seed is we don't need that with the process that i'm gonna show you guys today at least on VirtualBox. just go to the images download the amazon linux vm and like i said these are the options so vmware vsphere kvm oracle VirtualBox, which is what we want we want to download that virtual box and then they also have Microsoft Hyper-V as well. That'll basically tell you how to actually use them. And most of them are requiring that seed.iso, but I'm gonna show you guys how to get around that. And then let's go right here to the Amazon Linux 2 virtual machine images, and that'll open up the, the page in order for you to download it. So all you have to do is go in here and look for the virtual box area and then you can download the vdi and so let's go down and click that i'm gonna go down and download that and then we'll open up virtual vice after this in order to get it installed and just so you guys can see they do have a pgp key or signature for it sha 256 check some so you can make sure you're getting it from the proper source before we move forward i wanted to give a quick shout out to ciq the official partner of rocky linux Rocky Linux is a Linux distribution that is intended to be a downstream complete binary compatible release using the Red Hat Enterprise Linux operating system source code. The project is led by Gregory Kurtzer, who was the founder of the CentOS project. So check out Rocky Linux at CIQ.co. All right, cool. So I'm on my desktop and this is VirtualBox. If you had never used it before, VirtualBox is super simple to use. And I'm gonna walk you guys through how to get this Amazon Linux installed within VirtualBox. First thing you wanna do is hit new, and this will allow you to create a new virtual machine. I've done videos in the past on VirtualBox, walking through this process. Uh, matter of fact, a lot of the distribution reviews or quick looks that I did. I use VirtualBox and I walked through setting up the VirtualBox and then getting the installation completed within VirtualBox and then showing you guys the desktop environment and everything about the operating system once I got it set up. And this process hasn't changed throughout all the updates that have been given to VirtualBox over the years. 
And so it's a couple steps. What you wanna do is go in and name your virtual machine. So I'm gonna just name it Amazon Linux and I'll put it in two words, that's fine. And typically what you do is you go in and select your ISO image. We don't need to do that being that the virtual machine is in a VDI format. And so we don't have to select anything else under here. It'll store it in the virtual box location that you create in order to store all your virtual machines because it's just sim simply a virtual hard disk or a file that sits in a particular location. Mine is under my home directory in the virtual box VMs. That's the way I set it up. And then what you wanna do is select your type, which is Linux. This may be something else, but you just go in and click right here, hit select Linux, and it will bring up the options for you under here and you can select whatever you need. So if it's Red Hat, Oracle, I'm gonna just do the generic Linux. It really doesn't matter as long as you select whatever is closest to the operating system that we have. And I could have selected Rail because essentially that's what Amazon Linux is, it's Rail. It's Amazon's version of Rail. So let's go down and hit Next. And then this will allow you to select your memory size so or your hardware settings essentially. So you go in and set it. I'm gonna set this to which I really don't need that much. I'm gonna just put eight gigs. I had a resources so I could spare it. And then I give it two two CPU cores. That's fine. It's essentially running a server. And so once we got all that selected, let's just hit next there. Now this is where we'll add our VDI file that we downloaded. And all we have to do is click down here. You don't want to create one. You want to use an existing one because that's pretty much that VDI file that Amazon allowed us to download. It's essentially a image file for VirtualBox. It's a virtual hard disk. And that's the actual format that is stored in a VDI format. And so all you have to do is hit this little folder right here. That's a, that'll allow us to add a media or add a drive. So all we have to do is hit add, boom. It'll go through and look on our system for that VDI file. And all we have to do is change the directory depending on where you stored it. I stored mine in a personal folder that I create under operating systems and then VDI file. And all we have to do is open up that VDI file. It'll show up here. As you can see, the virtual size is 25 gigabytes. So that's the actual size of the drive that was used to create this Amazon image. And then the actual size is 1.16 gigabytes. So this is what it'll actually store on your system. But this obviously will grow to a max of 25 as your system grows. So all we have to do is hit choose. Boom, it'll show up selected here. All we have to do is hit next at this point and we are pretty much good to go. This is the summary that shows you everything we set. So the hardware, you know, the name, all that good stuff. And then the attached disc that we added to our virtual box. So all we have to do is hit finish and we are good to go. Our virtual machine is set up properly. Now there are a few settings you can go in here and change if you want to. I recommend you leave it to default so you don't run into any problems. Like I said, this is, essentially a server like Red Hat Enterprise Linux. It's a server edition. You know what I'm saying? It, it has no desktop environment on it. It's just basically a Amazon Linux server that you would set up in the cloud or something like that. And so this will allow you to go in and make changes to our settings of our virtual machine. We already set our memory. You can go in and adjust this if you need to after the fact. Processors, if you wanna you know, mess around with that. Acceleration, display, like I said, it's a virtual machine, so it really doesn't matter. We can bump the video memory up if you want to, but that's pretty much it. You can add more storage if you want to, to this virtual machine. It's a whole bunch of little options you could do. And then with the user interface, one thing I always like to turn off is the bottom menu that pops up. And I leave the one at the top one, which is fine. And let's go down and press OK. And now we can boot up our Amazon Linux. And you can select it and hit start. And they do have options under stored. They have headless or detached stored, but you just want to do a normal stored. It'll open up the display and it'll, sh it'll look just like a operating system is storing up or booting up. All right, so I'm gonna just double click on it and that will open up our virtual machine. And let's go down and close this right fast. Cause, and one thing you need to do when you first start it up is hit the down button or the down arrow just to move it around so it'll stop it. Cause they have a countdown. It'll go down and boot right into the operating system. Well, the problem with that is whoever created this, they use whatever passwords they use. And you wanna go down and change those passwords or go in and modify those passwords. 
And so let's go on and clean this up a little bit, make it look a little better. And let's move this out. And so I know this is super small, but I'm gonna go on and uh, just go through it right fast so you guys can see. And I go down and put these commands on my website of what I'm actually running in order to fix this so you guys can copy and paste. Well, not really copy and paste, but you can type it in just following along on my website. I'll try to create a guide for it. Lately, I've been forgetting to do that, but I'm gonna try to do it and start updating it and catch up on some of the videos that I have done in the past that require you to run specific commands. And so there's an option down here. Once we stop the countdown, there is press E to edit and press C for the command prompt. And what we want to do is press E and that'll get us to edit our boot up process. And what we want to do is look for some specific preferences for the boot up process. And we're going to go down. There is an area in here and I'll show you guys. It's right after the UID. Let's go back. And what I'm trying to get to is that or oh, I hope hopefully you guys can see that. But essentially it's the or oh, I'll probably zoom in when I edit so you guys can see a little better. But what we want to do is back that off and replace it with read writes. So RW space init and that means initialize and equals forward slash system roots. So sys roots forward slash bin forward slash shaw. And just make sure you don't have any extra spaces in here. Like for instance, there's an extra space right there. Just verify it's only one space in between everything. I think I might've hit my space bar too many times after finishing it. But yeah, that's all you gotta do is back that or off, that or o off, and then replace it with this rewrite, initialize system root bin SHA. And really what this is for is whenever you launch a Amazon Linux instance on AWS, you have to log in using SSH private keys. And this is because of the security. And so that's why we're making a lot of these changes. So you guys know. Now let's hit Control X and let me show you guys what, what it says down here. So press Control X to start or Control C for a command prompt or escape to Discord edits and return to the menu. Pressing tab, listing possible completions. So I just wanted to give you guys the menu, but what we wanna do is hit Control X because we wanna go in on this start. So let's hit Control X, boom, that'll boot it up. And this will allow us to get in to make changes to those user accounts that are on the system. And I hate this mice mouse migration thing. What we wanna do is chroot now. So we could chroot, and then we wanna get into our system roots and press enter. As long as you don't see any errors, you're good to go. Just just ignore it. If you, if you don't see any errors, you typed it in properly, you're good to go. Now, what we want to do is change our root account password. So we can type P-A-S-S-W-D root and press enter. And then we can change our root password to whatever we want at this point. It's going to ask you twice. So you want to type that in twice. Boom, good to go. So that password has been updated. And then there's another password or another account that's on the distro. It's actually the EC2 user account. And we wanna change that one as well. So it's going on type P-A-S-S-W-D and then it's the EC2 dash user account and press enter. And it looks like it's not there. And let's type it in again. Maybe I made a mistake or something in here. I see password and then EC2 dash user press enter. Cause I did hit a tab after that. Okay. So they must have removed that account from the system. Cause it shows that it's not there. And then let's go down there. We have to create a file, but it's touch. We can use the touch command. And then we want to put this in root, but dot auto. And this is a hidden file. So that's why it has a period in front of it. So auto relabel and press enter. And that'll create that file for us. And all we have to do is exit out of our true roots. And then we can reboot from here. So let's go down and type reboots, press enter, and we'll wait for it to come up now. And then we'll let it just boot right in normally without messing with it at all. And we should be able to log in using our root account. I thought it was gonna have that EC2. I think when I did this a while back, there was that EC2 a user account. But anyway, we could just log in using a root. So we are good to go. So let's root type in our password for it and boom we have amazon linux to install 
in VirtualBox and we could play around with this, install applications, you know, all that good stuff on here. And right now it's saying AL2 in the life is 2025, 06, 30. So that's June 30th, 2025. So we got time on it, but it says a newer version of Amazon Linux is available. And so you can check it out at that link or whatever, if you want to check that out, but you, you're free to play around with this Amazon Linux install as much as possible and use it however you want to. You can even, you know, set up your home network using this Amazon Linux distro. And one cool thing about this, yeah, they don't have a Proxmox version. I may do a video, another video showing you guys this, but you can convert a virtual box virtual machine and be able to upload it to Proxmox in order to run that same operating system up there on Proxmox. So that may be a way to incorporate it within your home lab if you use Proxmox in your environment, which I do. And I need to go through and show you guys how to do it because I've done it because I was like, ah, I got to get this in Proxmox. I don't use VirtualBox on a daily basis on my home lab. I use Proxmox. I have a separate dedicated server that runs all my virtual machines. And I understand Amazon is a big organization. They're only going to focus on the other major operating systems and not a Linux based or open source, you know, virtual machine or hypervisor that's out there. So they're not going to create an image for that. But this is a workaround, you know, temporarily until they possibly do this. All right, so that wraps things up and you'll be able to successfully install Amazon Linux 2 on a virtual machine in virt virtual box by following these steps. And remember, you can adapt these steps for other hypervisors as needed. And as you can see, the changes that I made, those are those changes you can make with that image file that's downloaded for those other hypervisors. Now, if you found this tutorial helpful, please like, share, and subscribe for more tutorials like this. And thanks for joining me. And if you have any questions or need further assistance, feel free to leave comments down below. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And of course, keep it safe.